Hey y'all, welcome back to Spirit of the Outdoors. I'm grinding out another big brother. Uh, you know, if you watch my fishing videos, I lost mine in the creek. Uh, I needed to make a couple of them to for somebody, but I got to have one first. Y'all, so far from what I have toted as far as usability, functionality, practicality, this has been the knife. And when I dropped that and I looked for it, I took a magnet, I looked off, I could not find it. Uh, when the water goes down, I'll probably locate it, uh, what kind of shape it's in. I, I, you know, depends on if it's exposed to the air or not when the water goes down. Uh, it was about four foot deep right there, four or five foot deep. Um, and I had Brody with me, so I didn't want to get out of the canoe and go to wading around and swimming. So I just, when the water goes down, I might find it. But so far, we're going to make another knife. And uh, so what I'm this video is about uh, is not making a knife. I've made plenty of knives on there. Uh, we are hand grinding this just like all the rest of them. I'm going to show you how I force a patina on a knife that I am not going to forge and quench and, and all that good stuff. So, uh, we're going to finish grinding this out. I like just a little bit grinding on it. Uh, not a whole lot. And this is cut out of those saw blades. Uh, these are, I don't know if you can read the name. These are tenru blades. You can see I have blanks drawn out on there. This is a, a fairly big saw blade this is not just a chop saw blade off your old miter saw over there these these are fairly thick now they're like a sixteenth of an inch which has been very good for me i have not needed a huge gaudy thick knife because i'm not using it as a fro so we're going to get this finished out and then we're going to decide what we want to handle it with but i'm going to show you how to force a patina on it I've just got a tall soup can right here. We're gonna get some fire under it. There is already some solution in here, but it is way down here. Uh, what I'm gonna do is drop my knife down in there. It's got this solution and the inside of this can is full of rust. You can kind of see what's on there. But what is in here? Vinegar, you can use apple cider vinegar or white vinegar. The acid in it is what you're after. Uh, there's probably a few other products. But it is not just vinegar. Good old tap water. Now, this is some rain water I caught out of a barrel. You want it about half and half. Um, I tried pure vinegar, did not work as good with this metal. Now, I want to tell you something. All metals are not the same. They don't all react the same. So, depending on what you want, I, I, I can't really tell you exactly what this steel is. Like, people want to say, is that 01 tool steel or 1095 or... I really don't know why. I know it's a high carbon steel. I can tell by the properties of it. Um, it is not the same as a uh, skill saw blade. This is this is different. Um, 
Now a concrete blade, you know, on the big concrete cut blades, they might be the same and like a tile saw blade might, might be similar to this. But anyway, what we'll do is leave this in here till it gets good and warm, but there's a little bit of a secret to this. So let it get warmed up. Oh, I'll pick you back up and show you what we do next. Okay, you take this knife out. You see that it is starting to darken. While it is wet, brush that. Dip it in there and while it is damp, not after it comes out and starts drying. Once it comes out and is dry, it ain't doing nothing. While it is wet, brush it. Now watch how much that's darkening up. Y'all can't tell y'all, can you? But now as it's out here, it'll, it won't, uh, and the reason I'm leaving this dark color is I have found that that will brown that some. So I am experimenting with some of this technique. But you see this handle up here. Is that, that steel is getting warm. And you see how fast right up there it's drying? I know y'all can't see a whole lot, but it is putting a good brown patina. Uh, and you see how brown that is. And what that is, the brown is the rust that is on the top of that can. You see this? See how it's foamed up? Yeah. Can't buy that at your store, see. <laughs> then you can lay it right down here over the edge of that fire, bake it into it. I wanted to mention something else. Y'all see my new glasses on top of my head? This is my new grinding glasses. Y'all, hey, the reason I struggle to wear a pair of glasses under this shed is because most of them are tinted. The clear ones scratch up really easy or seem to and glare out. They just glare bad. Um, and then, I, you know, what's the point of clear glasses? Other than just protecting eyes. At least with the sunglasses, I feel cool, you know, because they dark. I can, I'm like, well, they're sunglasses. Um, these actually have bifocals in the bottom of them. My mama brought these up here and gave them to me, so I want to tell her thank you, which I told her when she brought them but on video. Thank you, mama, for the sun, for the glasses. But she did bring me a pair of clear ones and these yellow ones. My dad had to go get some metal out of his eye. Uh, is what prompted that and uh, we were talking and I tried his on I was like well I can see out of that bifocal up there you know so hey <laughs> yeah I'm at that age I want y'all to see the patina look at the color of that and I know in here so so let's uh let me get a rag over here. This rag right here has got a lot of oil on it because I was fooling with that cast iron. I fried fish in my new cast iron skillet. Ooh, I like that. I likes that. But we're going to, uh, whoa, what'd you lay that? <sighs> Silly. Boy, boy, boy. Don't. I laid my wire brush down right there. Like, like, like to burn it up. Boy, that's how you start a house fire. Absent-minded, I'm telling you. I believe I'm getting old, losing my mind. I can't believe I threw my knife right off down. I didn't just throw it in there. I laid it on the boat paddle, was cutting up that liver. And then when I was paying attention, I'm watching Brody more and I'm watching what I'm doing. And I grabbed that paddle up to stir him out from under them bushes and my knife was still laying on the blade of that paddle, and when I picked it up, it just slid right on off out in the water. 
just crazy as a bat. All right, I'm going to turn this down. That's starting to boil in there. But anyway, I had that rag right there seasoning up some cast iron. But when you brush this, for some reason, it activates that stuff to patina that metal more than... But I got it too hot now. You don't want that really boiling. Oh. Uh, but we want to get a good dark on this blade. I want my blades looking fresh ground and like they just come from Walmart. Well, that went slim out there. We don't need it no more, I think. I think I got it patinaed about enough. And I cut the gas so off. My chair keeps sinking down into a hole over here. I can always do some more, but I got a really pretty piece of purple heart. I think it's what I'm gonna put on the handle. My buddy Kip Barrier brought me a bunch of wood back in the, ah, it's been here back a little while. I'm gonna lay that in there for a little bit. And uh, he brought that zebra wood and some purple heart. Uh, this is a zebra wood and then this here too and i'm not sure what this piece is uh some beautiful wood but that turn with that boiled linseed oil it turned dark and wound up really really beautiful um uh, so and this i'm anxious to try that on something so I, you'll see me make a few more knives here in the future uh, i've got found some more bone um, so I'm going to build me another bone handle buoy. I got my heart broke over my other one. Um, but anyway, I'm going to build me another one. This pine knot buoy, I just ain't, I don't know. It's not, I hadn't got attached to it yet. That is what we working with. I'm happy with it. It ain't got no shine to it, and that's all I'm concerned about. So, let's put this on there. Ooh, ain't that beautiful? I think that is some really pretty wood. Especially once it gets oiled up. So I take my two scales together. And, uh go over this and then once I get it kind of rounded off and I have already rounded this I'm going to take this rough this is a rough piece of a belt and just kind of shape it I ain't trying to smooth it just shape it and then I got a smoother belt okay and that's that is your front to go sharp my pencil. I had somebody told me that some of this wood was dangerous, like the sand and dust on it, so 
if this is one of them, I don't really know, but I just, I notice it has an odd smell, so I do kind of keep that kind of stuff in mind. Okay, now I can kind of draw where I want my pins to go. I want one right there, and I want one right up here. All right. I think I want that one. I may want it further forward. All right, let me get set up ready. All right, what I do is I clamp this down, get it precisely to where I want it. Make sure I have plenty room to drill this pin. Okay, now I went and got my other clamp. Before you loosen that, because I don't have room to tighten that down, I don't have room to uh, drill this front pin with this clamp in the middle. In other words, the edge of my drill will hit and it'll lean my, so I learned that the hard way. So I clamp that like that, and then I can come up here and line up on my dot for my other pin. Okay, when you're drilling these out, when you're drilling through already hardened steel, this has not been annealed at all, okay? This is just a piece of finished steel. Drill slow, okay? I've got a good drill bit, far hard metal. I don't even know, I bought some the other day. They're carbide bits or something like that. I don't know. But anyway, I have put knives together and never uh, never put no glue on them, pin the handles, but I quit doing that because um, pinned handles, those pins will split wood if, you know, when we've got good epoxy, that, that pin is there for looks and to hold it in place. Like with a bone pin or an antler pin, it just in case that gets hot or something happens and that glue or epoxy don't bind it, it won't slip out. Uh, it's not there to hold that handle secure and tight. That epoxy, that's its job. Uh, and fooling with woods, y'all, I use any kind of wood. When it comes to bones and antlers, I like to use stuff that I can locate and find. Uh, I had somebody want to give me some elk antler. I've got a bunch of elk antler, and I am not a fan of elk. I, it's too big, bulky. It don't. It's not Mississippi. Uh, you know, I don't know. But these woods, for some reason, the wood, I use wood from anywhere. So don't make sense. I know it don't, but that's just me. I, ha I just don't like elk antler. I have never liked elk antler. It just don't look the same to me. Okay. All right, let's get some epoxy mixed up. Put my drill bits up. <coughs> I if I leave them in my drill bit while I'm fumbling around out here, I'll knock it over and break it. All right, we got these epoxies mixed together, and I probably put way too much out here, but that'll be all right. They sell it every day on Amazon. Every, every day they selling it. Yo, Brody tickled me when I dropped that knife off in the water. He said, ah, we got another. We can make another. I said, that's right, buddy. We ain't on squall over spilt milk. 
We did try to find it now. I ain't gonna lie about that. I, I looked for my knife. Hammer, huh? one yeah we got way too much epoxy way too much glue sander to slick them pins down and I try to get between them pins and put that good squeeze on there oh I tell you I'm gonna lay this and down my somebody before I got this vice really beat on the top of it for some ungodly reason so it's got a little bit of curve so I have to be careful about this but we're gonna clamp this blade right here and let her dry. I done been right here filing on this a little while, y'all. Oh. But I do that and then to get up in this front part of this curve, I have got an arch shaped rasp. And you just don't go off the edge. You want to start at the outside, angle up and push in and then come over here and angle up. Because if you push off this edge, you're going to pull a chip of wood off. Ask me how I know. Because I done done it before. So basically, I'm just hand filing this whole knife into the shape I want. I have done it, I told y'all here when I was working on the buoy. I have done it with a uh, a, a, a belt sander over here on my grind belt grinder. I'm just not a fan of doing it that way. Uh, And we're getting it to the rough shape. I ain't finished polishing this. I don't know exactly how this uh this uh purple heart is gonna take shape here. Oh, uh, and like I said, I have done done this back. leather up here if I can get my hands on any of it. Just to keep from uh, scratching my blade all up. You want to clamp that pretty tight. But... You make it rasp that down just as fast, truth told, where I can see where it's at. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do just as well to rasp that end down. I had to get over here where y'all can see. I'm used to doing this with the other hand.
I take that rough and go back over these handles like this. And this is how I start getting that barrel shape, whatever. But for me, I want a handle to feel good in my hand. It's not enough for it to just be pretty. If it ain't comfortable to hold, to use, to keep from slipping out of your hand, you ain't on tote it long. And I'm starting out with this rough, and I've got a lot more work to do. Then I have to get us a new belt. You know, may have to tear up another one of these good ones, right? Out here on this back, takes a little more hand work. Moving slow to get that shape I like. And I'll probably, I may round some of it on the belt sander. Anyway, y'all, we about there. We about got a new knife made for our holster. Y'all, I rounded that up a good bit. I would go in there and do some air grinder sanding on it to finish that out. Uh, I do not have an edge on it yet, so we will have to put that on there. We're just about done. We're going to get this joker raised or sharp. And I think I'm going to put boiled linseed oil on this handle as well. Oh, it is a bright red color. I feel like it is going to turn it a real chocolatey dark color. I don't know. I have not experimented with this purple heart. I just know that this is my favorite knife design so far. I like my buoys, but if we're gonna drop back to just a good old tote knife, I like this. I like this. Now it is not small like a patch knife. I think the patch knife really has its place. This has got a good feel barely out the back of my and y'all this is for my hand i realize when i build something average knife maker is going to make it fit his hand so anyway i gotta have some more coffee y'all like my coffee cup i've had this yeti for a long time and i've I got two of these i won one Oh yeah, I like it. Yeah, buddy. All right, we done whittled that piece of paper all up. Let's clamp this thing over there. Put some oil on this handle. First off, before we do that, does it fit down in my sheath? It is so sadly empty. Yes, it do. That sheath had done got really sad. I caught it in here crying the other night, last night after I lost that knife. I walked by, I heard something sob, and I looked at that knife sheath, it was empty. Well, it, it won't be empty no more. We, we remedied that. So I got this little old bitty can of boiled linseed oil. I don't know if I got enough to do what I want to do right here or not. Okay. I 
I have tried several different things on knife handles and so far this is what I have liked the best I think y'all that is gonna if that color stays like that right there that is gonna be pretty I gotta get over here where I can look y'all ain't putting none on there I'm doing this All right, I'll let that dry and then I'll put another coat of two on it. We'll wash this in something. Y'all, I got my knife finished. Polished all out right here. Let me pull y'all this way where the yeah, the light's good right there. You can tell them. And there is a little bit of tooling marks you can see right in there, but all that stuff don't really bother me. And you see the, the brownish color into that patina? I like that. So anyway, we got a new knife. Goes right here in our sheath right there. Fits just like the other one. So anyway... Thank y'all for watching Spirit of the Outdoors. Remember, the best way to do things is the way you like to do it. We'll see y'all.